So how do we put those vision and those values into operation? How do we ensure that truly we are enabling our students to work hard and to be nice to one another? How do we make that happen in reality? Well, it's about all of us having a common agenda, all of us knowing where we stand and how things work. It's about being efficient and organising our structures so that then the creative and wonderful things can happen as a result. We've put together a comprehensive parent guide to support you. This has been written and then really reflected on over a number of years by experienced parents in the school. I'd encourage you to use this guide as a sort of dip in and dip out tool, particularly in those first few weeks of September. It talks particularly about logistics, expectations, academic development, how the curriculum evolves. It might be worth printing out a copy and having it somewhere helpful at home so that you know that if you get asked a question by your child or you're just curious about something, it may well be that you find the answer there. It is always available on the website, but as I said, I think a hard copy for these sorts of things is often helpful. Now, one of the first logistical parts of organising school life is, of course, placing your child into their first tutor group. They will, in fact, remain in that tutor group throughout their five years at school. It's a really special part of school life having just seen off our year 11s in slightly different circumstances than usual. You could see the bond that they had with the other children in their class, children that they'd had registration, activities, trips with over a five year period. They were close, they knew each other well. Something for your child to look forward to. But our tutor groups are put together with the greatest of care because we know if we get that right that your child starts off confidently. And it really is quite literally a giant jigsaw puzzle. Following all of those transition meetings, Miss Martin and Miss Ogbasalesi have literally spent time crawling around on the floor, putting together all of your different children into their classes of 27. Great care has been taken to ensure that the needs of every individual child have been met by creating classes that have balanced gender, primary schools, personality, not a class full of loud children or a class full of quiet children, and importantly, to match them to the right teacher. These groups are now finalised and you should have received an email or you will receive an email later this week which outlines which tutor group your child is in and the name of their tutor from September. We don't make any further changes to classes at that point but if you do have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to Miss Martin or Miss Obasalesi and they'll be happy to review any of your queries with you. Now, one of the things that I'm very conscious that as parents you are particularly anxious about is to do with assessment and baseline assessment for your child's starting journey at school. I'm conscious that um, in uh, normal times your child would have completed a very comprehensive set of uh, year six SATS exams and that they would have um, had great importance placed on them by your child's primary school but then also by us. As yet, the government hasn't confirmed what finalised assessment data will look like in the transition between Year 6 and Year 7, but it's here that we must, with our partner primary schools, very much take control. The Phantom Tolbert Literacy Project proves an essential part of this. The written outcomes that your child will provide as a result of reading that book are essential because we will use those pieces of work as baseline pieces of work, work that we can actually have on our fingertips to look at your child's strengths, their areas for focus as they move forwards. We will also have comprehensive reports from your child's primary school and we have met with each of the year six teachers to help us get a really thorough sense of where they have been at with their academic work, both in March when schools closed, but also now as well. We have always conducted a series of induction tests at school, chiefly looking at English, maths and science, but also cognitive ability tests. We will do those as normal, but of course they will have more significance for us in terms of the level of detail that they provide us. As always, those tests are not ones that your child can prepare themselves for. They're almost more helpful for us than they are for your child in terms of us ensuring that we best meet the needs of your child's curriculum as a starting off point. We're conscious, of course, that there may be some gaps that need to be covered based to the um, slightly messy finish to year six but know that we are ready and primed to do that and have very carefully developed our curriculum to ensure that it is ready to meet those needs. In terms of how children are organised into their class groups, students are initially taught in mixed ability groups, some through their tutor groups and some just uh, mixed up randomly to ensure that they meet a vast uh, array of children and also don't spend too much time with each other. That can often be a real plus point coming out of primary school. But we do move into ability groups traditionally after October half term based on the work that your child has done with us until October half term and those important baseline assessments. 
We will, of course, keep those things under review currently based on how we are able to start the school in September, but know that we do that in a staggered way. Then, once children are in their ability groups, there is regular movement between them in terms of children moving both uh, into a higher set or into a lower set, dependent on the support, stretch and challenge that they need at that particular point. That happens every term and it's done in a very open way and I think that's a really positive aspect of the way in which we organise our students at school.